every woman who was speaking was either a founder and is VC back or they were an angel investor or VC themselves. I felt, ooh, I don't belong here. What, what am I doing here? I'm just a public speaking coach. I thought of, they probably see that I shouldn't be here. But as soon as I had that thought process, I thought, imposter syndrome and so instantly i went listen enjoy and be confident in the fact that you are here for some sort of reason you don't need to know why but you're here for some reason i'm editing this in just to give you a few tips with some visuals open body language is something that i did open body language, open postures, looking something like this, open legs, or it can be open arms, open hands, even leaning back, creating space here in front of you or behind you. This is a closed one. This is what not to do. So arms crossed together, legs completely crossed. It's not to say that you have to look completely like this and completely not like this. However, it's good to mix things up. Maybe you cross your legs, but your arms are out, right? maybe you cross your ankles but you're leaning back and you have a relaxed posture so here's another example he's closed arm usually closed arms with a tight lip is not good this is called the stressed mouth according to them uh, but at least his legs are open imagine if his legs are closed it would have been better if he had a legs open with one leg out like so or you could put your hand on your hip, thus creating more spacing. It's all about spacing, spacing, spacing. Uh, you can even see that she's leaning back, which again creates spacing and angles. <laughs> You'll see here, this is an example of what not to do. But when I first met everybody, I was feeling nervous. But imagine this leg being tightly together with this leg very nervous and close off posture. You don't want to do that. So as I was becoming conscious about it, and this was taken before the actual speaking, this one, I just met everybody. I started to open up more and more with my body posture as it was socially appropriate to the setting. You'll see even here that again, I feel a lot more relaxed. You can even see in my face. I'm feeling a lot more relaxed in here. I was feeling quite nervous. <laughs> quite nervous but I, I did my best I took on the posture again doing this stance of one leg out one leg in just so it's appropriate still I'm not going to completely spread out a few key things I did before I went up to speak number one everybody spoke before me I was the last one so I had to watch everybody while I was doing so I definitely spread my arms out nobody sat in this chair right next to me so I put my arms out there and I did my legs as so one staggered out and I leaned back and then what I also did is I tilted my head what tilting your head does is it focuses yourself and your attention onto whatever is in front of you. Your physiology is informing your psychology that, oh, I find whatever it is in front of me very interesting, very curious about what they're saying. And you tend to really pay attention to whatever is going on in front of you. This is something I got from Simon Sinek and the way he speaks on stage. So if you're interested in how to present yourself on stage, then I'll link that below. Uh, I also did this while I was speaking on stage here. You see my head tilt just so I can focus in on the audience and not on myself. But here's a picture I stole from the internet, which is again, open body language versus somebody who's closed, crossed arm, crossed legs. And it doesn't mean you have to spray yourself open like this all the time. Again, what's socially appropriate if you have to cross your legs because that is more appropriate. Let's say you're a woman wearing a dress. Great, but spread your arms out. Don't uh, close in your arms. Just have them out and ready, open. Uh, it's good if you neutralize your wrist. So this is a neutral wrist versus a broken wrist such as this. But if you want to do a broken wrist and it makes you feel more confident and comfortable, just like this man, then okay, great. Another thing I did while I was waiting was doing breathing exercises <laughs> because I was feeling nervous a little bit. This was the first speaking gig I did since COVID. While I was waiting there, I did the square breathing exercise, which is inhale for four counts, hold for four counts, 
exhale for four counts and hold for four counts and then you just rinse and repeat that same thing i can um i did a video on it so i'll link that below in case you want to just know how it's done however once you know it you can do it anywhere any place at any time and nobody will know at all that you're doing this breathing exercise and that's what i love about it you can also do the inhale inhale exhale that's also a very, a very fast scientifically proven way to relax your um, nervous system. Although that's extremely effective, I prefer the square breathing exercise only because nobody will notice if you do the square breathing exercises versus inhale, inhale, exhale. It, there's a little bit more of a sound and you can kind of tell, but <laughs> if you don't care or you're alone by yourself before you have to present yourself, then go ahead and do the inhale, inhale, exhale, because it'll get you there faster. If you're watching this video or you're subscribed to this channel, you're probably the growth minded person who thinks I can learn this skill. I can do more. I can be better. I'm not just stagnant in the way or the person that I am today. I can be a different person one year from now, two years from now, five years from now. I can be more than I am today. And so coming from that perspective and that value system, I just thought, what can I learn? What can I learn? It's very interesting to get that feedback afterwards because there was a networking component to it of com people coming up to me wanting to be my client, but also the fact that people are saying, wow, you're so good at public speaking. And I promoted myself as a public speaking coach, so I better be good at it. <laughs> it felt good. So even though I am certainly not a VC backed or a VC investor, but I can rest assured in the fact that I'm always learning, I'm always growing, and that being the back mindset. So that's it on me, but if you like to learn more, then click on subscribe and I will see you on the next video.